Bending thin walled tube can be difficult because materials want to do what they naturally want to do. That's why the right tool can make the job easier. So let's make a tube bender. This is Cosador Jonathan here. So I want to make a tube bender to bend various types of metal tube. I want something that's easy and doesn't require too much time to make. I don't mind if the bend is imperfect on the basis that the internal volume isn't detrimentally reduced. And producing something that makes the tube square is only a reduction of the cross-sectional area of about one sixth, which is not that bad. And of course I want to make something that produces a better bend than bending by hand. For that, I'm going to need to make a plan. I need to make the part that the tube bends around. Let's call it the head. I'm going to bend four millimeter tube on a 6.25 millimeter radius. So I need to make a 12.5 millimeter spacer and the flat side of an M8 nut is close to that size. So I'll have to modify one of them and surround it by washers. The washers are 20.5 millimeters, which is a good size for the guides on the side with a bolt through the middle as a pivot point for a bearing to roll around the top. It leaves a four millimeter by four millimeter gap, which will ensure that the tube fits and that it doesn't push out excessively while bending. And I'll need to make some type of handle or main body to fit these things onto and also a gripping point to hold the tube. I'll start with the main body. I'm going to use a piece of 25 by 25 by three millimeter thick galvanized steel angle. I put the angle on the bench and I measure out 225 millimeters. And then I mark it using a square. I bring it close to the edge of the bench and I clamp it down. And with a hacksaw, I cut through the mark. I rotate and clamp it and I cut the other side. Now on another piece, I mark out 250 millimeters. I make some straight lines with the square and I cut it the same as I did the other piece. On the 225 millimeter piece of angle, I measure out 25 millimeters. And once again, I mark it using the square. I clamp it and I cut the line. Now I clamp it vertically and I cut off a little square and I'll save that little piece for later. Then I file off any excess to meet the other flat side of the angle. And I file off any rough or sharp edges. Now I have the two main parts of the body of the tube bender. I lay them on a flat surface and I line up the ends and I clamp them tightly together and they should be lined up perfectly on the other side. I clamp it all down to the bench and using a bit of oil, I drill a pilot hole. Then I drill out an eight millimeter hole. I want the edge of this hole to be about four millimeters away from the other inner side of the angle. And I need it to be about four millimeters because that's the thickness of the tube that I want to bend. And now I'll put the main body aside for later because I need to make the head of the tube bender. That's the part that the tube bends around. So I put a nut, a washer and a nut onto a bit of threaded rod and I tighten it up. I clamp a flat file to the bench and I put the threaded rod into the chuck of my drill. I use the rotation of the drill to file the edges of the nut off, writing the edge of the file with the washer. This probably isn't the nicest thing to do with a file, but it works well in place of a lathe. Now the nut is well rounded, but it's a little thick and I need to bring it down to about four to 4.5 millimeters. I can do this manually, or I can do it again with the drill and the file. Now the nut is to size, I need to do a partial assembly. I put two washers onto the bolt. Then I put the spacer and I tighten it down. I put another two washers then I put the bolt through the hole that I made in the main body of the bender. I put a washer and a couple of nuts to lock it down. I oil in between the two handles and I tighten the bolts and I check that the handles are well lubricated against one another. Now I need to make space for the bearing. I mark around the top of the head with a pencil and I disassemble. I clamp the handle down to the bench and with a hacksaw, I cut off any excess that I've marked. Then I file it down to the line, checking my work as I go. I reassemble and find a good placement for the bearing and I mark through the hole of the bearing with a pencil. I clamp down the assembly and I drill a pilot hole, then an eight millimeter hole. Now I need to install the bearing. It's important that I have a smaller washer that doesn't interfere with how the bearing turns. I put the bearing onto the bolt, then the small washer and some other washers so that the bearing lines up with the head. I insert the bolt. I put a washer and nut and I tighten it together and I check that the tube fits well in between the head and the bearing. Now it's time to make the grip. I get the small metal off cut from earlier and I clean off any rough edges with a file. I clamp it down the best that I can for a small part. I drill a hole and I tap an M8 thread. I check the alignment on the main body and I mark where I want to put a hole. Then I clamp the main body and I drill it out. I put another M8 bolt through the hole and I tighten it onto the grip 
and it's done. The evaluation. I'm going to bend two different types of tube, aluminium and brass. Let's start with the aluminium. With the tube bender in a 90 degree position, I insert the tube in between the head and the bearing all the way to the grip, and I tighten the grip. I have to be careful not to compress the tube as aluminium is soft. I bend to the required angle, and then I remove the bent tube from the bender. The tube does compress a bit, however the flow through the tube doesn't seem to be significantly affected. Now for the brass. With the tube bender in a 90 degree position, I insert the tube between the head and the bearing down to the grip. I tighten the grip. The brass is harder than the aluminium, so more force is required to bend it. Therefore the grip needs to be tighter than the aluminium, but the brass is harder and it can handle the pressure. I bend it to the required angle and I remove it from the bender. The result of the brass is much the same as the aluminium. On Reddit, there was a suggestion that filling the tubes with water, then freezing them makes for a better bend. So I did that, and I capped the ends with plasticine substitute. Then I put them in the freezer, and once they were frozen, I bent these too. The aluminium seems to perform better with the ice, but there's less improvement with the brass. The aluminium is much softer than the brass, which is likely the reason behind this result. The tube bender did bend both of the materials, however it did flatten them, but it did as well as what could be expected. I really could have gone to the effort of making a head and roller that fit the tube, and I'm sure that my bends would have come out perfectly. This is a really good example that the result of my input was proportional to the output, and if more effort was put into the construction, it would have ended with a better quality product. And if it was useful to you, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And if you would like me to make something else, just drop a comment below. And remember guys, break it till you make it, and I'll see you next time.